So this is a video to help someone on the Playmaker form. So the question has to do with accessing Playmaker with other scripts. Now there is a series of videos created by this guy to sort of try and help get it up and running. But he has in here connecting to Playmaker scripts and he can show you to go both ways from Playmaker to coding and then from coding back to Playmaker. But I think he uses JavaScript, which I don't use. I prefer C Sharp, but that's personal preference. So the question is this person is called Stitch Lips, is trying to create an application with virtual reality where they can pick up a cube or they can pick up an object and then get the other objects to rotate. So the example was here. So if they had a cube, they want to be able to pick up the cube and then get the cube B to rotate. They've attached some code, so I had a look at that. So what I'll do is I'll take you through what I implemented. So I'm not going to recreate everything from scratch because it will probably take too long, It'll probably take 10, 15 minutes. So to try and keep things short. I'll show you this working and then I'll walk you through it. So I'm assuming that you have, well, I'm assuming there is some basic sort of C sharp scripting and playmaker skills to be able to use this. If not, let me know and I can point you in the direction of some resources. But essentially I have this cube A, which is the red one on top. And when I click on cube A, the bottom tree will rotate. And when I release it, so I'm just using the mouse down button, and when I release it, so on mouse up, then the other cubes should stop. So this is simulating the sort of virtual reality grab and release. Okay, so if I press play, you can see if I click down, they rotate. And then if I release my mouse button, they stop. So the way it works is I created a C sharp script. So you can see it's attached here and it's called script to Playmaker FSM and what it does is you drag and drop whichever FSM that you want to use and you put it in there and then you can rename the states or the events that you want to send so in this case I have it start rotating and stop rotating now the same the same game object that I've attached a script to so this is cube A so it has this script I then have an FSM on it. Now I could have easily have dragged and dropped another FSM from another game object and put it in here, but to keep things easy, what I did was I created one script that will detect the sort of virtual reality component, and then I have sort of this master cube or this master FSM. And then from that master FSM, I then send events to the other FSM. So I'm trying to manipulate, in this case, the cubes. So I'll go into this in a detail in a second, but essentially this is what is where the virtual reality component or logic comes in. It then gets passed into this FSM, so that's what this one selected. And this one here it has it as start rotating, so it's listening in this state, and then it will move on to the next state and it will broadcast an event to all the cubes, in this case called rotate cube. Then when it detects the stop rotating, which is this one, it will then flow on to this state and it will say stop all the cubes and then once it's finished that it will go back into this listening state waiting for it to be clicked again to start rotating. Now you can also set this up like I've done this way which is you can have them as global events up at the top. It probably makes more sense to do it that way. I just wanted to show you the different ways you could do it. So this one sort of is the way it's set up is it flows from one state to the other state, but this one, it doesn't matter what state it's in, it will just quickly sort of jump to whatever one's needed. So what I've done is I've made a setup state. I've assigned the float variable and the rotation amount, so the time and the rot rotate amount. I then use an itween rotate add. So I pass in the rotation amount and the time. And then I created this finish loop, which is when I finish, I just sort of loop back into the state. So I just keep going over and over again. And I've saved the iTween ID. 
so that when the stop cube is called, I then use a night tween stop and I just turn off the ID directly there. Now the other cubes use the exact same logic. It's just really copy and paste. So to show you the C sharp script, so let's just quickly show this again working. So I'll talk through it and hopefully it will make sense. This script gets the virtual reality components. This is the sort of master FSM which triggers the event. So when I click down, you can see it moves. And when I release, you can see it flowed into the stop one. Now when I highlight these ones, you can see we're in stop. When I click on the red, we're in this one. And this is it jumping between the states that I mentioned before. So in this one, you can see it flows from one FSM to the other FSM. But when we click on any of these, we sort of just hop between them. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now the logic or the code, there's, I tried two ways to try and, I implemented two ways to try and show you, um, depending on your coding, I don't know how you have it set up. But essentially you go public playmaker FSM, direct FSM at the start. You make two strings or as many strings as you want. So if this is your master uh, virtual reality sort of script to the playmaker then these would be all your events that you want to trigger so it could be grab cube change cube change object stop cube any event that you want you just uh, name you put in here now the important thing though is that whatever you name in these ones so you can see these are just the strings whatever these are named you need to make sure that they match word for word in here otherwise it won't work so it's it's using a naming convention now for the mouse down I was just using Unity's built-in stuff so on mouse down on mouse up but you if you don't have these sort of global methods that are detecting it it is possible to create another set of um, methods so in this case I have mouse up and mouse down and then you can just put an if statement in an update so you can just check so depending on how you, your code is working if you have it set up with this one that you can detect a sort of um, when an event like grab is detected then you can just send out an FSM but if you don't have that maybe you need conditions well you can do it this way and then implement it like this it will work perfectly fine so that was seven minutes it's pretty long so hopefully this helps you out and if you get stuck just let me know.